In this video, we'll see how to use definite integrals to calculate work. Here we have a five pound object that we wish to move to the top of a 30 foot building. In physics, we define work as force times displacement. So we take our five pound object and we multiply it by 30 feet of displacement and we get 150 foot pounds for the work required to lift that object. But what if we use a rope to lift this object to the top of the building? Now we must lift not only the object, but also the rope. If this rope has a total weight of three pounds, we can imagine cutting it into several pieces. Each of those pieces must get moved a different distance to get to the top of the building. If our building has a height of 30 feet, here's our rope. This is a representative slice of the rope. Let's say that this piece of rope is x feet above the ground and its length is delta x feet. This piece of rope weighs delta x feet out of 30 total feet and if we multiply that by the three pounds the rope weighs we get delta x over 10 for the weight of this little piece of rope. That piece of rope then gets moved 30 minus x feet. So the work done on this little x slice of rope is delta x over 10 pounds times 30 minus x feet. To approximate the work done on all of the rope, we sum up all of these little pieces of work to get a Riemann sum, which converges to a definite integral. The integral must have endpoints of x equals 0 to x equals 30 to get every single piece of the rope. And now we can compute the total work done on the rope. Which will be 45 foot-pounds. It turns out there's a simpler way to compute this work. We could pretend that all of the rope is its average height, which would be 15 feet from the top of the building. And we could take the three pounds the rope weighs times the 15 feet, and we could also get 45 foot-pounds. But setting up the work here as a Riemann sum that converges to a definite integral is useful in other situations where a non-calculus method is not available. Let's revisit our problem of lifting an object to the top of a building. In most of the world, distances would not be measured in feet, but in meters. Let's assume that we have a 10 meter building now. And we have an object with a mass of two kilograms. How much work is required to lift that mass to the top of the building? The mass is not a force. We also know from physics that force equals mass times acceleration. And in this case, the acceleration involved is the acceleration due to gravity against which we must fight to move the object up to the top of the building. Near the surface of the Earth, acceleration due to gravity is usually called g, and it's approximately 9.81 meters per second squared. So the force for the object would be 2 kilograms, times 9.81 meters per second squared, and we would get 19.62 kilogram meters per second squared, which we also call newtons, or N for short. What about the rope? Let's say the rope has a total mass of 0.5 kilograms. If we take a small slice of the rope that is delta X meters tall, and this distance that that piece of the rope must move is 10 minus x meters from the top of the building. Then, as before, the work done on this little x slice would be the force required to move that little x slice times the displacement of that x slice. The force would be the mass of this slice, which would be delta x meters out of 10 meters times the total mass of the rope. So we have meters over meters times kilograms. This gives us a mass times the acceleration due to gravity. 
and then times the distance, which would be 10 minus x meters. Then we add up all of those little work estimates to get a total estimate of the work done on the rope. This is a Riemann sum, which converges to a definite integral. Here we integrate from where x equals 0 to x equals 10 meters. The total work done in this case would be 9.81 over 20 times 10x minus 1 half x squared, evaluated between 0 and 10. And when we work that out, that gives us 24.525 newton meters, because we're multiplying a force in newtons times a displacement in meters. And we often call this unit J for joules. Let's look at one more work example. If we have a swimming pool that measures 4 meters across by 10 meters in length, and this swimming pool is 1 meter deep at the shallow end, but 3 meters deep at the deep end, and we fill this swimming pool with water, how much work is required to empty the swimming pool by pumping all of the water over its top edge? What we need to think about is all of the water that gets lifted a particular distance. For the top one meter of water that's in the pool, if we take a, a small slice of that water, we would get a rectangular shape that would be, say, delta x meters tall, 4 meters wide, and 10 meters long. So for the top one meter of water in the pool, the work would be approximately the sum of the volume of this water, which would be 40 delta x cubic meters, times the density of water, which happens to be approximately 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So this gives us kilograms. Then we must multiply by 9.81 meters per second squared to get newtons. And then we need to multiply by the distance that this moves. Let's call that distance x meters. This Riemann sum converges then to an integral, and we integrate from x equals 0 to x equals 1 meter. This gives us the work done in lifting this top 1 meter of water out of the pool. But for the rest of the water in the pool, these rectangular slices of water are not all the same dimension. They're still all 4 meters wide. They would still all be delta x meters deep. But this length right here is going to change with the depth. Let's draw a cross section. At a depth of 1 meter, this length would be 10 meters. At a depth of 3 meters, this length would be 0 meters. So we need a length function that decreases from 10 to 0 over the course of 2 meters. So our length will be 10 minus the rate of change and we're losing 10 meters of length in 2 meters of depth, so that rate of change would be 5 times x minus 1. When I plug in x equals 1, I get a length of 10. When I plug in x equals 3, I get a length of 0, just as we want. So the work done on one of these slices would be the volume of this slice, which would be 4 times 10 minus 5 times the quantity x minus 1 times delta x meters, so this is meters, 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 we have cubic meters, times the density of water, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, times 9.81 meters per second squared, times the distance through which this gets raised, x, and now we have another Riemann sum that converges to a new integral, and the endpoints of this integral would be from a depth of 1 meter to a depth of 3 meters. Both of these integrals are relatively straightforward to work out. I'll leave that to you. And we can add the results to get the total amount of work required to move the water over the top edge of the pool. These work problems will have several different variations. But the key to all of them is to slice the object we're moving into small pieces 
construct a Riemann sum, let that converge to a definite integral, and then work out the definite integral to find the total amount of work.